welcome to the INI Builds A300 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're sat here at a hangar at JFK Airfield ready for our demonstration today. So what are we going to go over in today's video? We're going to start with the history of the A300, why you should be excited to fly it and why it's a fascinating aircraft. Then we're going to take a look at all the new features available on the A300 and go through them in detail. So let's get on with it. Let's start with some history of the A300 and why it is one of the most important Airbuses ever made, as it was the first Airbus ever made. Without the A300, you wouldn't have Airbus. That's definitely a fact, I would say confidently. It was the world's first two-engined wide-body aircraft. Now that's a big feat in its own right. And it was the world's first two crew wide body aircraft. Now that was with the A300 Classic, but it did actually beat the 767 in that regard. So that's two really big world's first. We are presenting the A300 600R. Now, what is that? Well, what Airbus did is they took all the things that they learned with the A310, all those new avionics, the glass screens, the FMS, and they integrated it back into her original design. And that became the A300-600, which first flew on the 8th of July, 1983. Now, you might have heard me say it's the 600R. Now the R adds an extra fuel tank into the tail, which we have modeled. So where does the A300 fit in the Airbus family? It made an absolutely excellent cargo plane and is still used today by pretty much every major cargo operator in the world. Why is that? Well, it offers a unique capability of being very wide, not too long, and can take off and land from pretty much any airport that an A320 can operate into. And that is quite a unique set of characteristics. And for a very, very long time, it was the only cargo aircraft you could buy from Airbus. They built the A300 cargo up until 2007. It's an old design, but it's not an old aircraft. That is something that is people often get confused with the A300. So it stayed in service all the way up until the A330 Pure Freighter was available. And that was the second only cargo aircraft Airbus ever built. So that's really quite a quick recap of the history of the A300. And we're gonna move on to looking at the new features. Okay, let's talk about the 3D and texture work that has been done on the A300. So as you can see, or hopefully you can see, we've really tried to push this to the next level. We've really tried to go above and beyond anything that we've done before. You can see the extra details all over the fuselage, all over the engines, everywhere. We've really tried to push that immersion that you're actually walking around an aircraft and looking at it in real life. One of my favorite effects is actually this kind of paint effect that you get across the aircraft. If you catch it in the right light, you can see it has this orange peely ripply effect on the side. Engines as well, you can see on the forwards fan discs, we have the little numbers. Now often they'll have these as well for engineers to be able to say, hey, it's fan this, 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 and this, and they can take it out, service it and whatnot. Just adds that extra detail to an aircraft that's been well used throughout its life. Now, let's take a look at some of the landing gear and tires. Now, those tires look brand new, don't they? Now, that's a bit of foreshadowing. <laughs> we'll get back to that later, but they are brand new and they look really, really great. Now, if we poke our head inside of the uh, gear bay, we can see we've got all the hydraulic lines, we've got the reservoirs, all the sort of things that are going on in here that you can check out if you're doing a walk around along with a lot of extra little details all over the exterior, hatches, things like this. I'm not gonna cover them now because we are gonna talk about it later, but let's just take a look at the forward uh, external power door just as an example. So you can see here, we've got the connection for where the external power goes and we have the little light that tells the ground crew that, hey, the actual ground power unit is connecting up to the aircraft and if we go into the flight deck we can also see that it's available. Little things like this are going through the exterior as I said we'll come back to that later. Okay let's talk about the interior 3D and textures on the A300. 
Now we've brought the interior up to the standard that we've got the exterior to, as I just showed you. We've got a lot more extra details all over the flight deck. So in the back corner here, we've got some more books, things like this, which A300s carry around with them. And we've also got the gravity gear extension handle, which does actually work. If you click it, it will lower the gear be warned <laughs> we've also got a lot more details on this rear area of the flight deck so this is where the rain repellent level is this is now done in 3d decals everywhere so you're not going to lose quality the closer that you get to the text on the overhead large portions have been remade just to bring it up to that extra standard and I really enjoy being in this flight deck. If this is the first time you're looking at the A300's flight deck, it's this wonderful mix of old and new with all the screens, which are CRT screens, so they actually have a curved face, which we've modeled behind a piece of glass. So when you look at it from the angle, they do actually look curved. Same as the FMS, which it may look old, but it's got quite a lot of modern features that we're going to go through afterwards, and this is a lot of it's been changed as well. Now, let's move out of the flight deck into the rear cargo area of the A300 freighter. We have all new in this area, new 3D, new textures, everything, and it really is showing you the sort of space and size that the A300 has, as we talked about in that history section. It's a very wide aircraft that can take two of these standard size wide body containers side by side, and the whole cargo area is modeled, as we can see, up to the rear. And we've also modeled a little cargo panel, so you can open the door, change the degrees of the settings of the door, also turn on the light, turn off the light, different areas, so there's a bit of interaction going on in here as well. You can also load custom cargo payloads from the EFB into the cargo area here, which will stay and are persistent throughout your flight. So if you load them on the ground, they're going to stay with you all the way to arrival. Now, we're not going to go through that in too much detail right now, but you'll see in the background some ideas of these custom payloads. Now let's take a look at the A300 passenger's interior. As you can see, a lot more details added here as well to bring it up to the standard that we've got with the freighter. So doors, galley, thing like this. And we've also got a two configuration. So you've got business class and then economy all the way back. And we've done more things with the seats and it's just a very nice place to sit and be in. Okay, let's move back to the flight deck and we're gonna start to take a look at some of these maintenance features and some of the stuff that I was foreshadowing when we were doing the exterior overview. Okay, let's talk about the maintenance options that are available on the A300. First of all, we're gonna start with oil. Engine and APU oil levels are simulated and they will be burned over time. One of the cool things that you have to do as the pilot in the morning is make sure that you drag the oil bug next to where it actually indicates and as you start the engine some of the oil is sucked out and as you turn it off it's sucked back into the tank or put back into the tank and you will actually see that level go up and down during engine start. During flight the oil will be burnt and you will need to make sure that you have enough oil before you leave for your next flight. If you ignore the problem long enough you will actually get a low oil pressure light and the engine will fail. Now, if you don't want to deal with these maintenance options, they can be disabled in the EFB, so it will just act like a totally normal aircraft, more like we had previously. We also have a similar system for the hydraulic levels. They will all go down slowly over time, and they actually don't always show the same value because they're dependent on temperature. And for the green system, you will often see it fluctuate up and down because when the landing gear is selected up, it sucks a load of fluid out of the system, and when the gear is put down, it goes back into the system. So you'll actually see that one sitting outside the range quite a lot. But it's something to keep an eye on and something to update over time. Now on the EFB, if we choose to service any of these maintenance items, hatches and things will open up on the aircraft that you haven't seen before. So we've actually modeled the whole inside of the engine. You can see the cowlings come open, and this is how you would refill the oil, like they would every single night and it gives you a time for this to take. You, you can skip that if you want it to be serviced straight away, but we've tried to use realistic values for these. Same for the APU. Now, let's talk about the brake wear maintenance options. These are actually really cool. So every Airbus aircraft is equipped with brake wear indicators. These are effectively sticks that come out of the brakes and every single time you brake, they get ever so slightly smaller and smaller and smaller as they go into the brake caliper. 
Now, every single walk around, an Airbus pilot is expected to check these to see that they're within limits. And you can actually do that on the A300 because these will get smaller and smaller and smaller over time until you need a brake replacement, which is really cool, giving another reason to do an actual walk around. These again can be replaced from the EFB if you need so. Now, I left my personal favorite maintenance option until last. So, as we foreshadowed earlier, all of the tires on the aircraft are brand new. But they're not going to stay that way. So every single time you do a landing, each tire is cycling up a landing and a takeoff and a landing and a takeoff, and they get worn out. Now, you would be surprised that tires get replaced a lot more often than you might think on airliners. So they go through different levels of wear and we've simulated these different levels of wear throughout each tire on the aircraft. So when you do a walk around, you're gonna actually need to check to see, does my tire look worn out? And what does a worn out tire look like? Well, if you can still see normal black tire with kind of a smooth tread, it's okay. Now, if you start to see the cords, which is kind of like the underneath of the tire, it needs to be replaced. Now, if you keep going, you're gonna get an even more worn tire and it's definitely gonna need to be replaced. And that can be done again in the EFB. But I love this effect. This is giving a real reason to do a walk around. You're gonna need to check these brake wear indicators, check the tires, and this is what pilots on the line are doing every day when they do a walk around. Also, when you're fueling the aircraft, you can see the fuel door comes open and it will actually show you your pre-selected value, the fuel tank value for each tank and how they're kind of increasing over time because fueling can be done instantly or in real time from the EFB. Okay, in this section, I'm gonna focus on talking about the sounds that we've added for the A300. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna describe them and then my voice is gonna fade away and the clips are gonna be played so you can hear them without my interruption. But some of the main areas that we've focused on are the engine sounds. So they really sound quite different at startup. So when the fuel is engaged and the igniters light the fuel off, you hear this kind of raw noise of the, of the engines coming to life. It's really, really quite cool to hear. Also, you're going to hear the engines on takeoff sound very different. Now we've focused on this kind of buzz saw sound that you can get from the CF6 engines at this mid-range N1. So when you're fully, fully going for it on Toga, you hear it, but not quite as much. When it comes back to climb power, you hear it a lot more. And we've really focused on that. And I, I think it sounds fantastic. area that we focused on are the gear sounds. Now they're interesting because when you're in the flight deck, you have the gear doors that are right below you. So when you select the gear down, the first thing that you hear is the doors coming open and then the gear transits. But that gear door opening is quite loud and you can hear that opening in the flight deck and closing again when you're selecting the gear up. Also with button sounds, so each button in the flight deck, each type of button I should say, has its own sound associated with it, but they're not the same recording. So if you press the same button 
two or three times, you might hear different recordings of the button. And the majority of these recordings are all taken from a real Airbus aircraft, which is really cool to give that sort of authentic feel. That was just a quick overview of the sounds. It's one of those things that's hard to get across in a video. You more just have to load up into the sim and really feel like you're in the A300. Okay, in this final section, we're gonna discuss the system changes and a little bit about the flight model. So a lot has changed across the A300. So we've refocused really on looking at the new LNAV and VNAV. It's a lot more accurate, a lot smoother. There's not as much sort of jerkiness on the, on the pitch with the flight directors, things like that. So when you're accelerating, you'll notice that the aircraft kind of slowly follows what the flight director's doing or the flight director might move and then it slowly follows it. This is all limited per mode. So it can only pull a certain amount of G-force. That's what the autopilot's based around for passenger, or in this case, in a freighter aircraft, pilot comfort. And that's actually what you feel in a real Airbus when you say, for example, select, I want vertical speed minus 500, and you're doing a huge climb. It's gonna take a very long time for the autopilot to actually correct itself and get back down to that vertical speed, because it's trying to do it without sticking you into the ceiling. And that's all modeled now, which is cool got brand new auto thrust we have new um, new drawing logic now this is something interesting we managed to find a bit more information on the sort of later a300s that use the older drawing style so on the a300 you don't draw curves but sometimes you do and we have found that out and we've implemented it so for example with DME arcs it will actually draw the curves same with intercepts and we've put that logic in there which actually makes doing some more of these complex arrivals quite a bit easier it kind of looks more natural and flies it more naturally while linked with the new autopilot as well accompanying this we've also got new auto land which is more capable more realistic it kind of flares a fair bit later and we'll also be able to decrab the aircraft and it even puts the proper correction for aileron in which is it's pretty cool to see sometimes you think well why do i even bother it's doing a better job than i can <laughs> along with that we've had many of the core systems updated and changed to match the a300 and also improve system fidelity across the board finally we brought a brand new flight model for the a300 and it's using the latest stuff from microsoft flight simulator so it's using cfd across the aircraft which gives it i would say it gives it like a heavier weighted feeling on rotation and also on landing so it kind of feels like you're definitely flying the a300 and the a300 still got its characteristic poor roll control so the ailerons are really not doing much because there's none on the end of the wing won't go through that now but it's all captured in the aircraft and that's all been completely remade from the ground up and that really sums up the a300 in microsoft flight simulator we really hope you've enjoyed this welcome to video and we hope you're going to be able to see the aircraft in the sim for yourself very soon. Thank you very much.